Do you know the real risks of backlinks for your website? Hi, I'm Jerry Krause, host of the Buying Online Business Podcast, and today I'm speaking with Rad Paluchak, who is a web developer and software architect with 20 years experience. He's a technical SEO mastermind in the industry since 2010. He's helped Matt Diggity run his SEO agency, The Search Initiative, and Matthew Woodward with The Search Logistics. He's recently founded Husky Hamster, outreach link building company. Now, Rad's specializations include international and technical SEO, machine learning, and understanding as well as looking at SEO from business and management perspectives. Now, this is such a valuable episode. If you're going to buy a website business that has backlinks, which I'm sure it does, it'd be crazy not to, this is the podcast episode that you need to listen to. Also, if you're going to buy a site and grow it, you need to listen to this. In this podcast episode, Rad and I talk about SEO due diligence. We talk about the things that you should be looking at when you're doing SEO due diligence, specifically backlink due diligence. Why some backlinks are good, why some are not, how to you know look at those backlinks, what tools you should be looking at, how many tools you should be using when you're looking at backlinks and doing due diligence on them, and what are some of the metrics and what are some of the things around PBNs that you should be looking for, and are there good PBNs or bad PBNs, and what's the difference between those. We also talk about how to measure backlinks, the ones that you may be purchasing when you're doing a backlink building strategy, how to measure the worth and the value of a backlink for your business and for your site outside of just the DR. Right? We talk about traffic, we talk about intent of traffic, we'll talk about where the links may come from. We also talk about tech SEO fixes. Now, most websites, you can go into tech SEO and you can just, tech SEO is a never ending battle, I shouldn't say battle, but a never ending story of things that you can continuously fix. We talk about some of the main common ones like page rankings and site speed and how you can make those better so you can have your site and your pages rank higher, bring in more traffic, and so your site speed can be that much more efficient. We also talk about plugins and all that sort of stuff. So there's so much value in this podcast episode. Now, we did talk about buying sites and doing due diligence in this episode. If you are going to buy a website, don't go away and try and do this for free or by yourself. Well, I do have a free way that you can do it, but I have my due diligence framework 2.0, which a lot of people have been raving about, which helps you buy a website. It takes the guesswork out of buying a website, it includes a bunch of questions you can ask the sellers and the brokers when buying this site. So make sure you get that at buyingonlinebusiness.com forward slash free resources. That's my due diligence framework that I and my clients have used to make millions of dollars and save millions of dollars when buying sites. So check that out at buyingonlinebusiness.com forward slash free resources. There's other awesome resources on that page too. Now let's dive in and have a chat with Rad. Rad, welcome to the Buying Online Business Podcast. Hi, Jared. Thank you for having me. First thing I want to ask you, I'm super excited to dig into a lot of the SEO stuff, a lot of the black backlink stuff and content creation. That's going to be hugely valuable for everybody to listen to. But I wanted to first ask you, have you bought websites before? Have you sold any before? No, neither bought nor sold myself, but we assisted quite a few folks in buying websites mainly. Uh, not selling, but buying. Obviously, when guys are selling websites, they usually want to do it on their own. Sometimes we give them some hints on monetization, but that's like, I wouldn't count it like a, like a big assistance. So you're not helping people with the due diligence, you're just helping them with a growth plan or like what, what did that look like? No. So like you said, when, when we're helping them buy a website, obviously we look at many things because we, we we support them in their due diligence, um, okay. And I, I'm I'm happy to jump into that um, in a, in a little while. But when we are helping guys sell the websites, this is where we only support them with additional you know ways on how they can monetize it. Um, if they're not doing something that we've heard of someone else doing when they're selling websites so we we offer them some help but this is you know any assistance in selling websites this is like a very small thing that we do so when you assist people in looking at sites when they're purchasing them i dare say you're looking at a lot of their seo stuff 
throughout the due diligence. We practice a lot of SEO due diligence when we're buying sites, but I'm curious to hear what you guys looking at. What are some of the metrics you guys dive into and look at that you think others should be, you know, people listening should be knowing about when they're buying a content site? I think the most important thing is um, links because that's something that you don't really have full control of after you bought the website. Okay. Let's, let's look at this from this perspective. SEO is usually, you know, three main things, let's say, right. Or four, um, if, if we are very specific, right. It's content links and technical stuff, right. Um, so with the technical stuff, whatever it is, you know, if there was something really bad on the site, it would probably not be ranking very well. So it's a high chance that you would not be even looking at it, at buying it. Okay. However, anything that is broken on the site from the technical perspective, then even if you buy it, you know, knowing that perhaps little risk, you can obviously fix it afterwards, right? There's almost nothing that is unfixable when it comes to technical stuff. <laughs> now, second part content. Okay. It's very similar, right? More complicated, but similar. Right. If there's something broken with the content on the site, truth be told, it's very unlikely that it's, it, it's going to be ranking. So you're probably not even looking at buying the site. Okay. Cause you, you'd rather be, uh, wanting a site that is uh, performing really, really well. Right now, when it comes to the content, I am very careful with the, with any assessments of the content because content, especially if it's a big, a big, um, info website that, uh, that you want to buy, uh, like, if, uh, like an affiliate website, for example, that is very content heavy when there's something broken with the content. And this is why that website isn't performing as well as it should be. When there's a, a ton of content on the site, it's very difficult to fix because sometimes you basically would have to, you know, rewrite everything. Okay. So if I have any indication during my assessment that there's something, you know, to do that, that this holding the site back, that it's to do with the content, I would rather be, you know, measuring that as a, as a big red flag. Okay. Now the biggest and most important assessment you should do before buying a website is in links. This is the last element. And I say that because links are pretty difficult to have a full control of, you know, they're, they're, um, they're placed on external websites. You know, someone was doing outreach or doing PBNs or doing whatever other link building they were doing. And if you don't really look at it very, very, very carefully, it's very quick sometimes to get you back after you purchase the website and the grace period is, is passed and, um, and you, you might regret it. So links, I would say would be something that I would pay the most attention, um, to. Yeah, cool. That's great to hear. Uh, we have some pretty important, uh, due diligence lessons on uh, auditing links. And I find cause it's usually a site will have a lot of links. It's a lot of effort throughout the due diligence to really understand the backlink profile, to get a good assessment on how quality it is versus non-quality. And more often than not, we find a lot of the sites we look at that they just don't have the best backlink profile. Uh, but there are some options, right? There are some options to go away and do some things. Once you have bought a site that it has an okay backlink profile, but you want to clean it up. What are some of those options? I know some of those options myself personally, but I just want to hear where, you know, what you would be doing if you, or what you would be advising somebody if they wanted to clean up a backlink profile. Mm -hmm. So one thing that I would, um, I would advise them is not to look at only one source of the information about backlinks. Okay. Yeah. So if you rely on Ahrefs and you only want to, you know, perform the backlink analysis using Ahrefs and Ahrefs only, then I would say this isn't enough. <laughs> okay. Um, basically the more tools you have at your disposal, the better 
and more comprehensive image of the site's link profile you will have, right? Obviously, Google Search Console, if you have access to it, or you know, the current owner of the site can give you access to Google Search Console, which I think um, I'm, I'm not sure how it works with the sellers, but if I was buying a website, yeah. I would always push to get Google Search Console access. We, um, we because, do. Because you can see a lot of stuff there. We do try our best to get Google Search Console access, but it's pretty norm for mm -hmm. uh, sellers to not give Google Search Console access. But are you saying mm -hmm. the look at both different, like you could use Ahrefs and SEMrush, and are you saying this because it's a the data is a guesstimation is an estimation from that the reason i ask that is because a lot of people uh, do due diligence and they look at keywords and look at like traffic volume and stuff on ahrefs and i'm like guys you don't get it like that's an estimation and it's not completely accurate whereas google analytics is far more accurate so are you saying look at the links based on multiple tools because of that the guesstimation between those tools well not necessarily or not only okay um obviously yeah. when it comes to links you need a lot of sources because only google and google itself knows all the links that they've seen point at your website okay they don't show all the links um, that they know of in Google Search Console. So this is another reason not to over rely or only rely on Google Search Console on its own on, uh, as well. Um, mm -hmm. But basically the more tools you have, the bigger picture you get. Okay, um, I think there's been um, there's been a, a, a blog post recently where a guy tested however many domains in all of these tools, and um, you know the, the the differences were you know pretty significant. Okay, I think Ahrefs came up as the most accurate one, um, considering the link profile that um, he had full of co full control of or something, um, but nonetheless both. Um, uh, SEM Rush, and I think he he used uh, Majestic. They all had some additional tool uh, links. Sorry, that Ahrefs hasn't seen. Okay, so the 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 more data sources you use, the more comprehensive uh, the image you get. Um, and obviously, you don't really want to miss. Uh, you 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 don't want to get in the into a situation where, let's say, you've analyzed um, for the sake of it, eighty percent of the link profile of the website, and the worst rubbish is in the remaining twenty percent. Uh, and this is something that that can you know that can that can uh, bite you on the back um, later down the line, All right? So, you know, more tools, better better picture, bigger picture, and 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 you're going to be safer. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, cool. Thanks, man. Love that explanation. So backlinks is a big one to look at, obviously, audit them correctly and and know the, the level of risk that's involved with them. Uh, what are some of the things that people could be doing if they go, all right, I like the site, everything else is ticking a lot of the boxes and the backlinks are okay like they're it's justified still worth purchasing but they want to do some work to the backlinks in terms of cleaning it up what do you do you suggest a bit of a backlink audit and you know removing some of the links like what would be a, a standard case scenario and and this will be a general this will be for a general site because i know it's going to be dependent on each site but what would you say in a general sense would be a good course of action to take? Yeah, I, I was going to say um, exactly before you added that a bit about the general, <laughs> general side that obviously it depends our favorite answer. Um, but I wouldn't necessarily go in and, and try to start removing or disavowing links um, just like that. Because, you know, on one hand, Google, obviously they claim um, and we as SEOs need to you know, verify those claims that um, they are good at ignoring links. So you don't really know which links they ignore, which ones they don't. Okay. Something that might look, let's say, suspicious to you might not necessarily need to look so suspicious to the algorithm. And, you know, the thing is, it's, it's, it's always a, a numbers game, right? So 
first thing I wouldn't do is I wouldn't go in and start disavowing, you know, go, going crazy, removing links or, or letting Google know that there's something happening with the backlink profile that is, um, that, that is out of the ordinary. Okay. Because I've, I've, I've seen a few times, um, over the recent uh, year or two, um, new owners of the sites who bought the site went in to do a huge cleanup, and apparently Google, Google didn't like it. Google didn't like it when it comes to link building. Google didn't necessarily like it when it came to you know completely restructuring the site. Okay, as the saying goes, don't um, don't fix what's not broken, right? Yeah. Um, what I would do, though, I would probably look through uh, the link profile and mark any links that I think are suspicious um, just to have them highlighted for later, okay? If something is, you know, going um, going down, let's say the traffic is dropping or, you know, you know, after an update, you think there's something affecting your site. I would then look at my list of everything that I highlighted and reevaluate that list and maybe then do some sort of disavow. Okay. But this is like a preemptive activity to have a, um, kind of like a, like a snapshot of the current situation, you know, your worries somewhere documented because you might need it later. Okay. Another thing that I would probably do, um, I would also look at good links that the site has um, that I definitely don't want to lose. Okay. And in case I lost them, you know, you can you can do it actually simply through an alert in Ahrefs, uh, one that sends sends you lost links. Um, and if I did lose those links because, for example, the previous owner was paying for them every month or something, I would probably try to try to get them back. Um, okay, that's um, that that's that's a pretty important thing. And um, obviously, depending on what links you have in your link profile, because Obviously, when you're buying a website, you know, there might be some PBNs. And I don't mean like PBNs that everyone, you know, fears and hates. But obviously, people are building good PBNs to, to support their sites. And, you know, they're not uh, public. They're more like private um, blog networks, <laughs> right, as, as, as the name says, actually. <laughs> um, so... <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, so you know, they might be used only for their network. So obviously, if they sell sold the site, they will be removing those links, right? So I would try to uh, spot those as well and try to compensate um, for that loss of of link um, authority. Yeah, we see that actually quite common in a lot of sites where somebody has a site attached to one of their other sites and it's completely legitimate links it's not like you know you know a pbn that people are fearing it's, it's completely legitimate but once they purchase the site is that yeah. other links going to stay in place and and what would that look like and what's the risk to this to the owner the new owner of the site if they were to remove those links and what's the what's the backup plan um the con contingency which is something that we mm -hmm. definitely audit and consider um all of those risks, the level of risk, how to reduce and minimize it as soon as possible once purchasing the site, which is pretty key. So backlinks, that's really good. I'm so so glad that we had this good discussion around. But so you're going to say something? Uh, yeah, sorry. I, I think because um, when you said to have a contingency plan, there's one, one more thing that is actually so obvious that I didn't even mention it, um, but it might be beneficial for, for the listeners. Uh, so every website has some sort of link velocity, which is the number of links it's getting every month. Okay. Mm. So after you purchase the website, you should try at least to maintain the velocity. <laughs> okay. Because again, um, you know, once you bought it, Google will see that there's something changed that the site isn't getting as many links as it used to get um, or something and, you know, might start getting a little suspicious, a little, little touchy feely on the site and, um, mm. and, and, you know, start looking more at it. Right. So you should actually, you should have ready your own link plan um, and just maintain, at least maintain what was happening for a few months. If you want to, 
you know build less links obviously you know in in many cases you if the site is um authoritative enough you can um although you know i would be careful with that but don't don't do a, a big switch at at the same time you know do it gradually yeah that's good that's good to know because it sounds like what you're saying is those people that want to sell their site a year before they sell it or six months before they sell it, they just spend a lot of money on links and buy a big chunk of links and then they do nothing. So their link velocity would have gone down, which not would not be good compounding growth for the new owner of the site, right? So something to be aware of when doing due diligence? Um, yeah, of course. Of course. I mean, honestly, I think, you know, due diligence on its own is is not only looking at the websites that you're attempting to purchase, but also looking at the strategy that is yours after you bought the site. Yeah. Okay. Um, and this is, this is quite often how we, how we approach that because we have clients who buy sites because they just want to milk them. Um, okay. But there's, um, a lot of people who, bu who buy sites to just keep developing them and keep growing them. Okay. And, um, my opinion is that when you're thinking about buying sites, obviously, if you're not just for, you know, having it for a few months or flipping it or whatever, you, I mean, even if you, if you want to flip the site afterwards, you already should be thinking about your strategy, right? So. Yeah have your link plan or at least um, um at least link plan ready for the site have some some strategy in terms of the optimization if in terms of the content at least a draft okay because obviously you can analyze it in, in more depth and you know refine it after you purchase the site because obviously you wouldn't want to invest too many resources you know building a strategy for a site that you don't end up buying um but right have something have a draft plan have some sort of um backup plan if you know in case something goes wrong um you know do good diligence due diligence and um and and you're maximizing your chances of not getting burned <laughs> yeah even if somebody was thinking about wanting to milk the site um, you'd still want to have a growth plan put in place so you can grow it and milk more from the site uh, and then still sell it at a higher price. You know, you don't just like think it's a bad practice uh, to just buy something and let it decay, <laughs> which is a massive shame for the business and for everybody else that even the users, you know, coming to the site, it's just a shame to see. So, mm -hmm. but surprisingly, I've seen it a few times where um, mm -hmm. the new owner only wanted to side because it was making, I don't know, six or 10 grand a, a month. And they were like, okay, so I'm going to sit on it for 10 months or, 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 or a, or a year and then uh, and then sell it for whatever uh, whatever I'm gonna get later, mm -hmm. right? But um, unfortunately, especially in recent years when Google is very active with its updates, you know, it's it's not easy not to have a plan. As you, as you said, if you don't work in something, it's it's very likely that it's gonna decay, and um, and you're not gonna uh, have ROI on this, right? So then, what's the yeah. point? I had that happen to me. I, I left a site for over a year, content site for over a year, and it, and it did okay. And then eventually, just started like going down. And I was like, oh, okay, there's there's some work that needs to be done here. <laughs> so we really had to roll up our sleeves. I wanted, I was going to ask about um, back another question about backlinks later in our discussion. But whilst we're on it, when people do have a, a plan in terms of growing backlinks, and a part of that might be buying backlinks. Where do people go wrong when they're buying backlinks? For example, metrics that they might be looking at and thinking it's just, I just need links with this DR. What is, you know, where are people going wrong by not understanding the f as much as they should or knowing how, or having an education around what should be, what a good backlink actually should look like before they go away and purchase? Because a lot of people will get taken advantage of, right? There's so many companies that will sell just links that have this DR, but no traffic. <laughs> Yeah, definitely. Um, definitely. And um, that question is actually very complex and not only complex because um, because it's difficult overall to assess um, an individual link because you have to take a few um, a few things into consideration that I'm going to um, uh, explain uh, in a second. But and I think this is a, the, the bigger issue uh, when assessing links 
everyone has their own different opinion about uh, quality of links and what uh, quality entails. <laughs> yeah, just like every SEO <laughs> has different, a different say, thought process around like the you know disavow backlinks and the backlink building strategy and content creation. It's just everybody's yeah, it's cool. It's good though. It's good that you can you can we can listen to all these different SEOs and make our own assumptions. So we'll definitely take that in consideration, Rad, because yeah, <laughs> yeah we respect what you've got to say. <laughs> Yeah, look, so I've seen people who say, you know, any link is a good link, um, especially if it's free, <laughs> mm -hmm. um, which I partly agree with that because, you know, every signal to Google is, is a signal to Google, right? Um, yeah. But I've also, I've also seen people who say, oh, yeah, now you can't even ask for links because, you know, Google might get pissed off. But I think... You know, and and this is what what we do. Um, this this is what what we believe in. Um, the truth is somewhere in the middle. Okay, so our process is usually to obviously look at DR, which is just a, an industry standard um, that try, allows you to somewhat um, understand the authority of the site. Obviously, DR you can you can pump, which is and, and it's easy there a gazillion offers on, on Fiverr where they will they will just uh, pump um, and usually dump your DR. Um, so together with DR, we actually look at um, the ratio of inbound links versus DR. And that tells us, you know, if there's, for example, if there's 3,000 referring domains and DR is only, let's say, 40, then that's an indication that, th that this DR might not be necessarily of um, high quality and or, or authority. Okay, we use um, another, um, let's say, twin, uh, twin metric uh, that we also look at, uh, which is... Um, referring domains versus backlinks, a number of, of individual backlinks. And that tells us, for example, if a site gets a lot of site-wide links, uh, because obviously then there's only one referring domain, but might be thousands of, um, of individual backlinks. Okay. And um, obviously these are the metrics that you can get from Ahrefs and, um, and I think it would be too easy or, um, or, or, at least too easy to manipulate and too easy for Google to actually be smarter than that. Um, so another thing that we look at this uh, at, at is um, actually the site itself. If it looks legitimate, if it has like a contact page that has more yeah. than just a form or an email address, um, mm -hmm. if it has some about us pages um, or something that indicates that it's a that it's a more or less legitimate site. Okay, obviously. You know, I've worked with many affiliates who um, who hide their um, their um, identity behind the sites, uh, behind the site, and um, they would even um, have it um, verified in Google My Business. Um, so obviously, ev everything is is manageable in terms of um, faking, right? You can fake yeah. pretty much everything. But yeah. if if you if you think about it, you know. Let's say Google looks at the site and it checks all the boxes, right? The quality is good. The, the content on the site is good. It's not, you know, generating tons of content only f and, and every single post has like five outbound links to different domains, uh, which is, by the way, another thing that we look at. Uh, but from Google's perspective, what's the, what's the difference if the site is legitimate, is provide, it provides value to um, the internet, to the users, What's what's the difference between PBN or and uh, you know a, a TechCrunch website, right? Um, yeah. Obviously, there's a big brand behind it, but you know if you th if you're thinking about um, growing site, even if it's your PBN, it, you can actually build it into being a well-respected, let's say, uh, niche site that is nothing but a PBN, right? And, you know, I don't see anything wrong in getting a, a link from, from a site like this, right? Yeah, I like it. I like it a lot. And I guess sometimes people will hold, uh, and this will be, I don't know if it's a mistake, but sometimes people will hold more value in a site that has a big brand and a big DR and all that sort of stuff. 
versus something that's so within their niche, say they're in the fishing space and they're getting something, a, a link from TechCrunch versus like one of the biggest fisher people, um, fisherman, fisherwoman in the States or the world. Obviously I would be trying to go for a link that's very in the niche because that's going to send authority and traffic our way for within that niche plus yeah, the traffic there. So I don't know, it, it's obviously that's going to be dependent on the link from, you know, TechCrunch and, and the uh, Fisher person. But I, I, I think a lot of people may not see Val or, or just, just see the DR and the big brand and go for that rather than knowing that it may actually be better for the user of that link coming mm -hmm. from that site to come to your site rather than somebody going from TechCrunch to a fishing site. <laughs> Yeah, I mean that's that's spot on. Uh, I mean, I wouldn't say no to a to a link from BBC <laughs> or TechCrunch, obviously, right? Yeah. But if I have a niche site about kayaking or fishing, and mm. you know, I get a link from a fellow um, uh, niche site of, uh, in in kayaking about kayaking or or fishing, then that's that's golden right that's probably the best um the best link relevance you can you can get towards your site okay yeah. um wh one thing one thing i would um i would distinguish here is why are you getting that link okay because quite often if you get a link from from something big something with a lot of traffic um like TechCrunch, if if we're using this example now then you're probably gonna get a lot of traffic from that link too okay mm. so yeah. you know from seo perspective i think it's actually pretty difficult to measure how much a link from TechCrunch is going to bring you like genuinely, you know, you're going to get traffic. You're going to get, um, you know, your DR will probably, um, hit through the roof. Um, uh, you know, you're gonna, you're gonna get a lot of, um, trust and authority, but in terms of pure SEO, all of these things are somewhat difficult to measure. Okay. So if you're getting a link from, from a phishing site and it's, you know, relevant from the article that is relevant to your article and has great um, has a great anchor text. Then you you're definitely you're definitely going to feel that link. Okay, whereas TechCrunch quite often it's only a, a domain name or your brand name, right? But yeah. again, you know, depends what you get this link for. for right? What's the purpose? If it's a pur if the purpose is building trust, building your brand name or getting traffic, then obviously TechCrunch is better. When this link is, you know, about getting um, niche relevance, getting trust f within the niche and um, for purely SEO, um, um, SEO slash ranking uh, purposes, then the link from, from a phishing site might be better for you. Just to highlight that, I wouldn't say no to neither of them. <laughs> yeah, if they've got their own pros and cons right like i'm i think about the intent of the traffic coming from each of these links for example the intent of the traffic mm -hmm. is from the fishing site to your own fishing site is going to be a lot higher than the intent say from a tech site to your fishing site and that's a very general statement because there might be a lot of people that are in the tech space that love fishing as well but more so i would put more weight in the intent for coming from fishing to fishing and then it's, it's it's come back to us being dependent right like it depends on depends on the link depends on the traffic depends on the site depends on so many things yeah it's interesting that you mentioned it because another thing that we quite often take for granted is um or as seos we take for granted in terms of google is trust okay i even yeah. You know, when I was uh, talking about TechCrunch link, I, would, uh, I said, you know, you're going to get a lot of trust and blah, blah, blah. But this trust is purely from the, um, from the, from the search engine perspective. Okay. This is like an, this imaginary thing that we measure, you know, trust slash authority, you know, DR and things like this. Yeah. But, you know, referring to what you said about, um, about the very, very, niche site in the same niche that, that you are you know this is where you're gonna you can get people's trust okay yeah. is um on TechCrunch, 
you know, everyone knows they publish a lot of stuff that is not necessarily relevant to their sites anymore. You know, some reviews or, you know, epilators or something uh, or some, <laughs> some other, you know, technical bubble and, and, and tools and little, yeah. little um, things. And you're like, you know that they publish it for, you know, affiliate money for whatever ads and stuff like that, right? Promoted yeah. content. Yeah. Okay. Um, so you're like, yeah, okay. I land on the site. I saw it on TechCrunch. Yeah, I, might, I buy it or I might not. But if you're very in the niche, if you're doing research as a user, if you're, you know, looking at fishing rods or whatever, um, and you're stumbling upon an article that references something else that, on, that is on a very niche site, you know, your trust is probably, um, is probably higher, but again, like human trust, not, not search engine trust. Yeah. <laughs> which is very valuable to have human trust <laughs> because that can equal more, more if you've got affiliate site can equal more affiliate sales. It's easy to think about, I just need some backlinks for my site, but I don't think people really go into the depth and the thinking that we have just in this discussion on, on like the, the quality of the links and what actually makes them quality outside of just, just DR and just pure brand behind that that link that's pretty important you know people might be able to pay less in a in a backlink building um, campaign getting strong links with high trust from people in the space rather than going after i want something from forbes i want something from bbc a, a edu sort of link uh it's really really cool to think about so thanks mm -hmm. for bringing that up and having a breaking that down for us i want to switch gears to tech SEO. Just, just quickly maybe Go on. So sorry, before we before we switch switch gears, um, just two very quick tips for the audience. So in our opinion, and this is what we what we built into our um, QA process for all the links. There's two things that you can look at fairly quickly that uh, obviously other than DR and, and all of the other things that I already mentioned, um, but are very reliable to tell you if this link will count towards what Google thinks about um, that link or it, and, and if it's going to give you a pop. Okay. And first thing is um, looking at the site's traffic, or if you're doing a link, uh, a link insertion at the pages traffic that is going to link to you, uh, because you know, I know the, there was a, a study by Ahrefs uh, where they said that um, whatever was it like 90% of the internet isn't getting any traffic. So, you know, thinking about that, if you are getting links from the 10% or however many it was um, uh, in the study th yeah. of the sites that are getting traffic, then obviously this is probably something that Google will notice, right? Um, it's, it's a simple calculation. If Google thinks that the page or the site is good enough to rank it, then it probably thinks it's good enough um, for it to link to you, right? So probably this yeah. link is gonna be good. Um, and that. another thing is we try to, obviously depending on the niche, because for example, in gambling niche, you, you can't get links without like right for us advertisement on the sites um, and stuff like that. Uh, but we try whenever possible, we try to avoid any websites that have, that are, you know, directly advertising, Hey, we're selling links. Hey, you know, right for us, you know, we get, you give us article, usually uh, also money or whatever and uh, and you're going to get a link back right so we we try to we try to avoid these uh because it's like google looks at it and it knows that they're probably they're probably selling links right yeah i love it i love that thanks for those tips that's great so coming into the tech seo i know that we're going to go deep into a few of these so maybe we just stick to a few but what you know when somebody either buys a site or they already own a site, what are some of the most common tech SEO fixes a site usually needs? I know it's, again, dependent on the site, but what are some like generally common ones that you see that people should be aware of? And there could be like two, three, I'm sure there's a lot, but let's stick with two to three for now and we'll go into those. And then if we need, we can, we can jump on more. Okay. So first one I would, um, I would always look at myself is index management. Okay. So basically looking at, you know, doing the site search on Google for your domain, 
looking what Google has indexed, especially paying attention what Google has indexed at, you know, towards the end of uh, what it's showing you in the index, right? Because um, there's a few things. Obviously, you know, it would be difficult for me to go into um, how to fix some of the issues that you might find there because it's like plenty. Uh, but a few things that uh, you should definitely pay attention to. So if you have an average sized website, let's say, I don't know, 100 blog posts, um, for example, right? Um, if you look at what Google got indexed um, and you know you have 100, 100 blog posts, you know you have additional pages like um, obviously homepage and about us, contact and things like this, plus category pages um, mm -hmm. or some other hub pages, you can estimate that, you know, what Google should see in the index is, let's say, up to double of uh, w the number of your um, articles. Okay, so if you look at uh, site search and you see this a lot more, for example, then you already know that Google is indexing something that it shouldn't be indexing. And very common problem um, within the indexation is tags. And um, I don't know why, but most websites that I've worked with ever is uh, weren't doing tagging. Um, in WordPress the right way because they were either going to granular or to general and then you know when they go to granular then they end up having tag pages that only have like one or two articles on them and obviously that's just you know straight up thin content or if they go to general general they uh, they end up having um, the same the same tag or tags with tag pages with the same articles in them or tag pages that correspond with the category pages and then what what's 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 the point having them at all okay so i yeah. would definitely look at that another thing is uh when you're looking at um what's what's google got index obviously i'm i'm mainly mentioning um the site search on google itself but you know one thing that i'm also that I'm like, let's say obsessed with that um, also reveals what Google has in the index is uh, Google Search Console, but I'll leave it on the side because there's, there's a lot of help on the internet um, around, you know, what all of these things uh, cr um, crawled, but not indexed and, and stuff yeah. like that mean. Um, so let's stick to, to the site search itself. So let's say, Again, you have those 100 uh, article pages and one of those that you definitely want to rank and is very important for you because say it's an affiliate site and you have high commission on um, is showing in the site search on the fourth page. Okay, so that's a clear indication that Google has a problem with that or most likely has a problem with that. If looking at site search, you know, in general, Google should rank those pages that it shows you by uh, what it thinks uh, is the quality weight on those pages, right? So most often, um, in most cases, you would have your home page as number one, and then you, ha you would have your second and third and so on, most uh, popular slash authoritative pages on the site. I think it, it still stems from, um, from the old page rank um, uh, page rank metric, uh, how how they um, how they rank it in the, in the site set. So obviously, if you have your important page ranked very low um, when doing the site search, that's an indication that you got to work on this, right? You got to either yeah. you know look at the content, right? There's something wrong, maybe it's over optimized. Um, you have to look at the navigation that points towards that page. Maybe you need to bring it higher. Maybe you need to build more internal links towards that page, um, just to you know get this page rank um, up within the yeah. site, um, or um, or I don't know, maybe. Maybe there's something else, right? There's, uh, yeah. there's a lot of things you, you, you could look there's at, but lot. you know, that's an indication, right? Um, and while we're at it, um, you know, like I said, that for most healthy websites, your homepage would be ranked number one when you're doing the site search. Correct. And um, don't take it as a rule of thumb, but um, think about it as a, as a warning site 
if Google is not ranking your homepage number one, then it might indicate that there's some sort of devaluation going on. Um, it might not, right? But it's a, it's something to, you know, investigate for sure, you know, spend a little time on, you know, don't not obsess with, um, but, you know, it, it might be indicating that there's something already brewing, um, something that you don't want already brewing in Google um, around around your, your website. When you come to tech SEO, it seems like you've got a lot of work that can be done and you can get focused in on one direction and, you're, and it may not actually get you spending too much time and effort on that. If you go too far deep into it, it may not actually get you the best return. So it may be best to come back to some other Tech, tech SEO fixes would be like, this is what's going to allow us to move the needle more. And that'll be what those, what those tasks are will be dependent on the site. Right. <laughs> but for the one that yeah. you mentioned is, you know, page rankings, um, and getting the, you're making sure that your most important pages are ranked high. And if not, how do we get them higher? What does that look like in terms of, do we need to get more? you know, fix the traffic up, internal links, maybe even backlinks to them. What would be another big one that people should be probably looking at when they go in and go, all right, we need to fix some, fix some things here? I would probably, I would probably look at page speed. Okay. Mm -hmm. And um, don't get me wrong. I'm not obsessing about page speed because I think, you know, a lot of these tools, they're not necessarily actually measuring the real page speed of the page. Um, so the one that actually the actual user sees, um, yeah. but obviously page speed is nothing that you want to neglect. And well, surprisingly, especially when, especially when you're on WordPress, page speed is actually a fairly easy thing to you know get higher you know fix implement um you know install plugin like wp rocket for example or yeah. nitro pack um tamper with the settings you know use for example cloudflare um with you know auto minification and rocket loader if you've, you've got a lot of javascript you know hopefully it's not going to break anything um but <laughs> overall you know those <laughs> those plugins are 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 there for you to use they've got a lot of settings that you can tamper with play around with a lot but not that many that you know an average user an average site owner cannot actually you know take and and, and play around with yeah. um and i think you know quite often you know just changing a few things you can you can you can get a much better page speed um and by the way speaking of uh, page speed and and plugins one thing that page speed definitely and uh, very rigorously looks at is um, image optimization okay and um, WordPress hello this like a bunch of plugins that you can use mm. um, they're all great I myself use short pixel um, you know on fully automated turns your images into a webp format um, which might sometimes be a problem with 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 the Apple users because uh, not all Safaris uh, support WebP, um, mm. but but I've tested um, a few plugins, and according to my tests, Short Pixel was the best when it comes to the optimization. Even if you're not using those next gen formats like WebP, and you're just doing the the simple optimization jpeg to optimize jpeg um short pixel is always giving me the best results in terms of the, right. the, the, the how much the, the the file was um lighter and uh, the best thing about all of this is you know you implement it using a few plugins and it's working sidewide so you know mm -hmm. One thing you're spending, let's say, a couple of hours on this playing around and, and testing and improving, but it's going to benefit your entire site. It's going to roll over all of your pages. Awesome. Love it. Guys, check out check out that plugin. Also, Rad, thank you so much for coming on. There's, I feel like we're just scratching the surface, so we might have to get you back on and have another chat if you're open to it. But where can we send people to find out more about you and what you're doing? So you can find me on social media with Rat Palushak as my handle. Um, I'm 
pretty i'm becoming more active on all of them linkedin twitter um come find me you can visit our website huskyhamster.com um where we're offering um free link building consultations um and obviously link building um packages and and individual links as well so come and say hello i don't buy yeah. it and i'm very happy to help everyone who needs that yeah guys as you can tell just from having rad on here he knows his stuff so definitely get in touch with him there'll be links to that in the show notes rad thank you so much for coming on everybody that is listening thank you for listening and i look forward to speaking to you on the next one hey youtube watcher if you thought that video is good you should check out this video here on the two best types of websites beginners should buy or check out my playlist on how I made my first 100K from buying websites and how to do due diligence. Check it out, it's an awesome playlist. You'll enjoy it.